Hello friends, welcome to the session. Today we are going to study what is deterministic finite automata, how is it mathematically represented as and some examples on the same. Let's get started. <music> Now, we are going to study deterministic finite automata. Now, before going ahead, please try to understand the word deterministic. When I say deterministic, that is the output is going to be finite in nature. That is, either it will be giving the output yes or no, or it will give some valid output. Therefore, I say the output is determined to come. That is, for some input, there will be some output. And that some output will be kind of logical. The exact vice versa machine that we are going to study will be called as non-deterministic finite automata where the output is really going to be unpredictable. I do understand that the definitions are also sounding quite weird. Therefore, the simplified versions of the definition goes over here as we do it. So we have, when I talk of deterministic finite automata, it is an automata that is going to consist of finite set of states. So of course, like my finite state machine, like my FSM, like my finite automata, here also we are going to have finite set of states. One state will be called as the start state and there can be one or more final states. So this line is really common for us. Going to the next most important line. In DFA, from each state, on each input symbol, there is exactly one transition. This is very important thing about DFA. In DFA, from each state, on each input symbol, there will be exactly one transition. This is what we are seeing throughout till now. So right now, we have studied a lot of finite state machines, a lot of finite automata, and everywhere we saw that QS on receiving some input was going to one state, QS on receiving some other input was again going to some state and that was just a single state. Similarly, Q0 on receiving some input or Q1 on receiving some input were going to distinct states. And my DFA is going to be quite similar to it. So it will be going to distinct states. Therefore, we say in DFA, from each state on each input symbol, there is exactly one transition. You will immediately come to understand the difference between DFA and NFA when we jump onto NFA. So now the next thing that we have is the mathematical representation of deterministic finite automata. DFA is mathematically represented as M is equal to Q summation del q0 f where my q is represented by finite set of states my summation is called as the input alphabet we all know what is summation we all know what are the finite set of states as in if i say i am talking of divisibility by three the set of states are going to be qs q0 q1 q2 similarly the input alphabet over here will be 0 1 2 3 4 up to 9 because we are talking of decimal numbers so same thing will be applied over here also moving down to the next and very important part of the deterministic finite automata in fact this is the heart of it that is called as del and this del is called as the transition function now this transition function del is defined as q cross summation gives me q now what is q over here we say when i say q cross summation gives me q i say given a state and an input symbol what is the next state so my fsm also works in the same manner and the function over there was the state function which was saying given a state and an input what is the next state s cross i gives you new s over here that s is called as capital q input is called as summation that is the alphabet and the new thing that we get is again called as q so it is quite similar to the finite state machine going ahead we have q0 q0 is called as the start state 
seldom also called as the initial state and the important thing about this is q0 will always be belonging to my capital q that is finite set of states that is my start state will always be of course a part of the set of states lastly f f is called as finite set of final or i can also call this as accepting state therefore i say my f is going to be a subset of q you cannot say that f belongs to q although that is right but it can be a single state or it can be more than one state therefore i say f is going to be a subset of q because f is not going to be a single value it may be multiple values and therefore talking of multiple values we say it is a set so f is a set which is going to be a subset of capital q that is the finite set of states so that completes the mathematical representation of dfa now let's try to understand the example and the working of dfa which will actually make the theory clear but before moving on to the example i like to highlight one line once again and that line is in dfa from each state on each input symbol there is exactly one transition so keeping that in mind let's try to work with an example so i say i have with me three states first state is my q a state the next state which i have is my q b state and the last thing i have is my qc state now in dfa there can be one or more final states i am assuming that qc is my final state so kind of i can say that i am doing reverse engineering over here that is i am assuming the transition diagram and then i am thinking of constructing a dfa it can be done in the vice versa fashion also so i say qa in dfa from each state on each input symbol there is exactly one transition so qa on 0 i am assuming it's going to qa qa on 1 i am assuming it is going to qb had i written instead of 1 0 here once again that means the behavior of qa is unpredictable that is qa on 0 can go to itself or it can also go to qb if that is the case it is not the case of dfa dfa says from each state that is from maybe from qa on each input symbol there is exactly one transition similarly i say qb on 0 goes over here qb on 1 comes over here qc on 0 goes to qb and qc on 1 goes to qa now this i call it as my deterministic finite automata now let me write my mathematical function if you remember the mathematical function was written as m is equal to q summation del q0 f where q was called as the finite set of states what are the states that i can see in this particular diagram they are qa qb and qc so let's write it qa qb and qc then moving on to the input alphabet if i observe along the edges of this transition diagram i see only the numbers 0 and 1 therefore they are nothing but my input alphabets then coming on to the transition function which we will discuss at the end i can also write what is my start state if i observe the diagram there is a arrow in state qa signifying that qa is the start state so i have qa over here and my f is for keeping a track of the final state which is double circled in the transition diagram denoted by qc so that completes my q summation q0 and f and now we are only left with the transition function denoted by del which says given a state and an input symbol what is the next state so let me draw it so over here instead of preparing a table of s cross i 
आई एल बी प्रिपेरिंग अ टेबल ऑफ क्यू क्रॉस समेशन वेर माई स्टार्ट स्टेट इज क्यू ए नेक्स्ट इज क्यू बी एंड लास्ट इज क्यू सी इट बींग द फाइनल स्टेट मार्केट एज स्टार देन वी हैव अ जीरो ओवर हियर वी हैव वन ओवर हियर गोइंग अड नाउ QA. If I observe the transition diagram above, QA on zero is going to QA. I write QA over here. QA on one goes to QB. Write it over here. QB on zero goes to QB back. QB on one goes to QC. QC on zero is going to QB, and QC on one is going to QA. so that completes my transition table going ahead let us do some examples my first example i say qa and let that input be 101 so qa on receiving input symbol a now for having the answer to this i can either look in the transition diagram or in the transition table both of them are going to give me the same answer so qa on receiving 1 qa on receiving 1 is going to qb fine so i just look into the transition graph and what is left with me is 0 1 qb on receiving 0 let's look into the transition table now qb on receiving 0 stays in qb okay what is left with me is 1 and lastly when i say qb on 1 qb on 1 is going to qc now if you remember in finite state machine we used to stop here but now we are going to say that the input is over and that end of the input is signified by epsilon so now it is qc comma epsilon and since qc is the final state i will therefore say that the number 101 will be accepted by my deterministic finite automata now this problem actually does not have any logic it is just for you to demonstrate that dfa is going to work in this manner the problems on dfa will be done in the upcoming sessions let's discuss one more problem on the same let's discuss one more example on the same so i say let my example be qa comma 1100 qa on receiving input symbol 1 goes to qb 100 is left with me qb on receiving 1 goes to qc so i have qc comma 00 qc on receiving 0 goes to qb so qb comma 0 lastly qb on 0 goes to qb what is left on the input tape is epsilon and since qb is not marked as star that is since qb is not the final state therefore i say that the input 1100 will be rejected by the deterministic finite automata so that's how my deterministic finite automata is going to behave the main foremost thing you have to remember is in dfa from each state on each input symbol there is exactly one transition with this we end the session for deterministic finite automata over here see you in the next session thank you